Hi everyone, so Microsoft have announced two new consoles. But don't get your hopes up because unfortunately one of them is just a slim version of the console we already have and the other one we won't be seeing until Christmas 2017. Talk about a bit of a pre-announcement on that one. So what exactly are Microsoft saying? Well essentially a slim Xbox One, it's about half the dimensions as it were of the original Xbox One and a brand new console with a brand new architecture. It will still play all of your old Xbox One games, but it's now going to be 4K capable. And more importantly, it will have more than enough power under the hood to make sure that those frame rate dips or resolution adjustments uh, don't have to be done on the fly by the games. Essentially, this is the games console Microsoft should have delivered, but they didn't. Same is true really for Sony here, who will be adopting a very, very similar architecture. Both companies are working off the Polaris system from AMD, which is also rumored to be the same system Nintendo will be using. So when you hear lots of claims of uh, six teraflops, eight core CPUs, 320 gigabits of bandwidth, etc., just know all of the consoles are likely to deliver within that performance envelope. So why is Microsoft going ahead with this? Well, it's pretty obvious really, because Sony announced they were going to. Nintendo had already announced that they were going to be launching a new console, probably around 2016 to 2017. Microsoft, already the most underpowered console on the market when it came to the next gen, really didn't have many choices here. It's a case of do or die. Now, VR is playing a big part in driving forward all of the manufacturers right now. It doesn't matter whether you're Microsoft or Sony or Facebook or Valve and the HTC Vive. At the end of the day, this is the new paradigm shift as it were within the computing landscape and everybody needs to have base hardware that can do it successfully. Microsoft is no different. Even though they don't have an in-house VR strategy as it were to develop hardware, they're positioning themselves as the games console you can use any VR headset with as long as it's not a Project Morpheus anyway. At the end of the day, what Microsoft wants to do is to be open enough that people will want to use existing VR equipment on the Xbox One, thus extending its um, desirability in the living room, as it were. To do that, they're going to need a bigger, faster, better games console all round. Now, one of the most interesting things about this is how exactly Microsoft will go about making sure backwards compatibility is maintained. So let me know in the comments what you think. Is this a great move from Microsoft or is it just more of the same? Do you think Microsoft is going to be able to deliver a console that really does compete with what Sony and Nintendo are bringing to market? Or do you think they're going to miss out again? Bearing in mind that this is a very much a um, winter 2017 product, it strikes me that we could actually see both Nintendo and Sony beat them to market. Either that or it's going to be a very, very, messy Christmas as we try and decide which of these three new consoles on the market we're going to be buying just two years after the last ones were released. Yeah.